Okay. You know the songwriter's secret. What are you going to do with it? I get a lot of people asking me about, well, so what do you listen to, Brother Theo? I'm going to share some of that with you. But more importantly than that, I want to give a special message to my aspiring singers, songwriters, entertainers. The Creator gave you that creative gift. I remember when creating, nothing felt more invigorating to me. Do we feel a spark? of a desire to be like our maker in whose image and likeness we were made when we make and when we create when a little kid sits down and draws something with his Crayola crayons or markers is there a piece of him that's satisfying that which is made in the image and likeness of the creator How can you not encourage that? But yet at the same time, do so with a realistic overstanding of the end game. You play to win. What is winning for you? Do you aspire? to be on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine and I'm not you know aiming this at any particular individual because the correspondence that and well the message that inspired this video uh, was very clear that they overstand and they understand that it's time to take a stand But yet, when you've done something for all of your life, when you've aspired to reach the highest heights, when you've been given the highest pipes, the Lord has given you pipes for the ability to tear down on an instrument. You want to do something with that. And in the world we live in, a viable option is presented to everyone, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, 366 on a leap year, is to take that talent and slang it, get paid off what you made. And is it wrong? Are your gifts and talents given to you so that doors will be opened for you? But there's a whole system that's twisted up that whole game. And things ain't gonna never be the same. So what do you do with your talent? Well, I'm gonna tell you something I know about. I know people who are making a living. When I say making a living, I mean they can pay all their bills. feed themselves and others doing about as well as someone with a decent job and I, when I say decent I mean decent job not uh, Maybach money but they're satisfied because they and I know more than one but they receive the priceless gift of being able to do what they love to do and get paid doing it not get rich doing it so I encourage you to find an avenue use what was given to you by the creator to find a way to give it back to to uplift and upgrade creation 
by expounding upon who it is that gave you such great talent. When people love on you and they tell you, oh, are you so great at doing this and doing that? I used to suck it up, eat it up. Oh man, your beats is all cold. And I used to, you know, it would feed my ego, you know. So, oh man, yeah, yeah, well, you know, I've been, I've been working it for a long time. I had a, I had a bowl full of different things I would say to respond to those compliments until until I began to really have an epiphany about Lucifer's involvement in this business. And I was one of those people who had to see the reality of Lucifer to really get a better grip that's laid on my head but to really get a, a better grip on the reality of the most high and so uh, for me once I saw that reality then I began to change my answer and it began to almost feel uncomfortable to get those compliments I felt I didn't deserve them I didn't do anything but receive something that was given to me freely you know when you have a natural knack for something, how can you take pride in it? Anything that was given to you naturally, how can you truly take pride in it? You know, I said, well, you know, God bless me with this. And I noticed that others would begin to feel uncomfortable with my new responses. So, to my artists out there, the more that you turn away from the Luciferian inspired energies and philosophies <laughs> that by and large will rule your colleagues and contemporaries the more you pull away from that the more that the spirits that are inspiring them will begin to conspire against you and zero in on you too sabotage your shows cause unnecessary problems between you and your group mates when the enemy sees that you're pulling away he tries to put stumbling blocks in your way so I would advise the all believing artists to increase your prayer life the doors that the Lord opens, none can close. And the doors that He closes, none can open. So if you know He's opened that door for you, for some people there's nothing else to do, you know. For some. That may not be the case for you. He may just be simply testing you and trying to get you to. do something else wake up from a dream you know we're told to pursue our dream we watch shows like fame movies turn to TV shows like fame we saw people struggling to make it you know Glee was nothing but fame 2.0 fame for this generation same basic type of setup but it helped to ingrain in us that it's good to do anything you have to do to pursue this dream follow your dreams you, know, you should follow your realities you should work your plan and plan your work and you should see the difference between possibility and probability anything's possible but anything's not probable it's very difficult to become an NBA basketball star it's very difficult to become a rap star the odds are against you. And on the spiritual level, let me tell you, the little G gods are against you. Hello. But some of you, you will not make it because you've not been picked. Oh, yes. Let's get into this mess. We're talking about people that the enemy has chosen. 
as opposed to continually opposing. Can't beat them, let them join me type of mentality. And he sees people who have quote unquote God given gifts as prized possessions, prized captures in the grand chessboard game. If you imagine like the In Our Lifetime album cover, the devil Marvin versus the godly Marvin playing on a grand chain, on a grand game of chess high in the sky, maybe we'll use that for the thumbnail. So, if he picks you, and I've noticed this, he likes to pick people from certain bloodlines. The musical gift is a ministerial gift, so if he picks you, he's only trying to pull away one of the Creator's ministers. If the music is really in you, then you have a music ministry. So you may want to sell it and turn it to something else. Let the devils that run the behind the scenes operations in the mind control program convince you to sing or rap about something other than what you were given the gift to sing or rap about. But at the end of the day, the truth is the truth and you can't change it no matter what you say. You've been given a music ministry. It is the reason to praise, uh, excuse me, it is the reason for music in the first place is to praise. It's what the enemy, who is the chief over music and over the music industry, is what the enemy did. It was the purpose for the creator creating music. Okay, so let's get that out the way. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to look out on the next two teachings by request. Uh, we, we've had some people enjoy the readings, so by request we're going to do a couple of more readings. Uh, but first on the docket we still have the uh, study of babies and the Holy Spirit uh, babies are essential to the enemy's plan to his takeover agenda in basic warfare 101 you kill off the men you take over the women and you reprogram the children you indoctrinate them raise them up in the way that you want them to go and that's what we're seeing happen uh, in grand fashion, especially when you look at um, you look at the depiction of Prometheus as it is seen in downtown Detroit, in the statue called the Spirit of Detroit. Prometheus is nothing but an uh, allegorical story of Lucifer taking fire or taking power, if you will, the light false light as fire as a false light and taking it down to mankind dazzling and amazing mankind with it in order to receive worship so on and so forth but the Prometheus story is a metaphor really it's a simile an analogy for the story of Lucifer and when you look at that spirit of Detroit statue which is a representation of Lucifer right down there in front of the Coleman A. Young building it used to be called the city county building but when you see this representation in one hand you find the child, the woman and the man and in the other hand you find the representation of the light or the energy form and the focus is on the family so, music, television programming, television, tell a vision, or tell lies to your vision, programming in movies, uh, the programming in movies has also uh, been used to help to uh, confuse and to destroy the man by way of imagery. The image of a man has been effectively destroyed and feminized and conquered to take over the woman because the behavior modification programming aimed at women 
by way of Oprah and by way of uh, reality shows and housewives and whatnot has effectively taken them over. As a woman goes, so goes the nation. And then to retrain the children, to raise them the way a Luciferian society would want them to go. There is such acceptance among the children of occult things. Harry Potter was a big doorway into that acceptance, but you find it many other ways as well. So we're going to look at uh, the power of uh, children, the importance of children, and the power of the Holy Spirit and how it rocks through them uh, as well. So we're going to, those two things should be next on the agenda. But let's look at the other side, music versus good vibration. Muse sick. Muse sick versus good vibration. There is good vibration, and there is Muse sick, the sick spirit. Of course, there's good vibration because David used the harp to soothe King Saul's foul mood. Music calms the savage beast. You can tell a lot about a culture and where the culture is going, a civilization, by its music. So, as we look at the songwriter's secret, we have to come to grips with a couple of things. A, we'll never stop listening to music. That's right. You can adjust the type of music that you listen to. And B, you'll never be able to deny the effect of music on the mind, body, soul, on the mind, will, and emotions on the body and on the soul as well. So what do you do? Again, do you run screaming when you go to the dollar store and over the speaker they plan to need a baker? Of course not. The spell requires your ignorance. The spell requires your complacency. The spell requires your denial that it's there even now when I listen to music and I try to listen always for research even if I would call myself trying to hear one of my positive playlists I still you know constantly I'm constantly on the lookout for the songwriter's secret in its many different forms, you know, in, in the different forms that it will appear. But I have three playlists. I have a consciousness playlist, I have a playlist called Vibes, and I have a playlist called Gospel, or Detroit Gospel is what I call it. This is the breakdown of those three playlists for you. And I, I created a, a playlist here on YouTube. You know, I compiled it. Some of the same songs that I, I have on these playlists. I, I won't go through all of the songs, but I'll give you examples of the songs. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why these three playlists are here. But what I did for you was... I made a playlist called Ain't No Secret on the channel and I compiled songs that uh, in which uh, I found no guile okay and a couple of the songs and uh, one in particular was Donald Byrd Stepping Into Tomorrow I was a little unsure if I was going to add it in there because much like you'll find with Frankie Beverly and Mays, it's not that there's a blatant, you know, not, not all the time, at least especially not in mostly instrumental music, but we talked about how it can be 
use to open gateways, portals. Uh, every spirit that won't confess is not of God. But there's a new age slant in stepping into tomorrow. You know, I really feel by the Holy Spirit. That's what's really going on there. The music is eerie, but admittedly, it's one of my favorite songs. It's a song I listen to just about every day. Okay? And what we will do is we will take just like just like you do when you're listening to a love song. Stepping into tomorrow is not a love song. But I just, you know, must admit right now the Holy Spirit just began to convict me of that. And to say, well, it's the same way that people do when they're listening to a love song. They twist the meaning up. You know Neo not singing by no woman. Have mercy. Same thing with Luther. You know, I like Big Luther. Big Luther used to jam. Marcus Miller was putting them tracks together. But uh, the same way that you will make it mean something different to you and think that that really changes the meaning. Just because you want to ignore the true meaning of something does not change the meaning of it. That goes for usage, usage of the word in word too. Just because you want to change the meaning does not mean that the true meaning changes because you want to give it a different definition. So I got to apply that also to myself. So we're stepping into tomorrow. Yep, that's what it is. But I'm going to leave it on the list. So you can see what you get from it as well If you're not familiar with that song But I have a lot of songs That uh, Especially on the vibes list That I know would fall into the, what, what I just described This new agey deal But let's look a little bit at Why I originally had compiled These three lists And, and of course I have my soul, soul jams list Which we go through that list all the time all the jams that I named. Okay, but what I wanted to, what my intention was, and the road to hell is paved with good intentions, so that, that, that don't mean that it's it's right, just because I feel my, I feel, somebody say I feel, they're not telling you the truth, just because my intention was good, uh, you, you still have to go by what the Holy Spirit leads you uh, to do and, and to believe. And again, if you're going to teach these things, how can you teach something and not uh, be aware of it and not research it so and, and I do separate the two you have to remember too I, I can think quite clinically about music having worked in a recording studio from the time I was 16 on up my first recording I did at 13 but I started going regularly at 16 and I got a job there at 19 and I recorded a lot of people's music and you tend to be able to separate yourself more easily when that has been your job from the emotional way that music makes you move it makes you do something it carries you away okay love TKO come on you can't help but hey okay but Again, sometimes just as human beings inside of a flesh skin, you want to hear some pleasing tones. So my intention was to put together some songs, since you're going to listen to music anyway, that have a pleasing effect on the body. The frequency and the vibration tended to be uh, agreeable and pleasurable to me because I know the difference. I know when the vibration agitates me. Okay, now that I'm getting old, you know, I like to keep up with what the nieces and nephews is listening to just so I can peep the game in it. But the older I get, the less I can tolerate it, to be honest with you. So I wanted to show in the vibes uh, playlist, I wanted to show songs that are more agreeable to your vibration you are filled with water you are sensitive to vibration if you play dark and what 
negative music. Yes, music. It's full of energy. Energy can be positive or negative. If that's the type of music that you play while you uh, write or draw, it's going to shade what you write or draw. Absolutely. There's no getting around it. Okay. I'm not saying that if you listen to death metal and you draw, you're going to draw pictures of skulls and demonic faces. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that it will shade and influence you. Influence the fluids. It will come in to you. So, and, and it will change the way you flow. So, that's what the vibes playlist on my horn is for. R2D2 also has a consciousness playlist and songwriter secret that can be found in some of those songs is uh, anarchy programming nationalist programming okay uh, and pride but aside from that I wanted to point out the songs that have lyrics that have meaning that aren't songwriter secret lyrics okay so I got a gang of those but there is there's your conundrum I presented you with it the songs don't contain the songwriter secret okay but again the artists themselves weren't perfect men and that's no excuse but it's a reason why although they can come up with conscious music they still will often fall to New Age leanings or nationalistic leanings or something along that line, okay? So, now that that's out there, let's look at the list, okay? So, in the consciousness list, many of the songs are there for nostalgia. You want to watch out for nostalgia. Somebody break it down. Look it up. You want to watch out for nostalgia. Does it have to do with keeping you in the past? But... A lot of these songs were key songs to me as I went through my uh, learning and my studies about knowledge of self, where I came from, uh, where it may have appeared that I was going. And a lot of these songs were landmark songs in my development. And that's part of why, why we listen to music. That's part of why, why we uh, love it so. It can take you back to other times. And again, my purpose for showing you the songwriter's secret was to take the effect of the spell away. What makes the spell effective? You not knowing it's a spell there. Okay? So, in consciousness songs and, uh, you, get, you know, social political songs, which were big in the 60s and the 70s, if you did, but, and, and even in the um, pro black consciousness rap era okay that was big uh, around the time of uh, X-Clan Public Enemy Carers 1 okay the, these were uh, artists who used their art as a platform to make political statements very rare to see that today I mean in a consistent and edifying way okay but my consciousness list has social political subjects addressed songs like uh, just to get by or i try with a uh, talib kwali and a uh, mary j for i try self-awareness again having uh, some knowledge of self sans the pride minus the pride because pride give you a blind side be glad and be aware stay away from pride okay that's doable. I know it is because I do it all the time. Anti Illuminati and NWO themes. Oh, yes, and I was asked about the roots too. No, the roots did not make my vibe list. And I can give you a little personal story as to why. The roots, you wouldn't believe me. You wouldn't believe me. I'm not even going to tell you. But, you know, just consider this. 
when you go from being an underground underdog to a late night TV number one band there's something I'm missing you know proof is in the pudding you'll check the billboard it's not hard for me to tell uh, I know that smell okay you, you've done some things you've participated in some rituals and you've made some alliances in order to do that there's no escaping that and, and, and that's my brother Joe uh, I'll see you soon brother but uh, that you know in short that's all I'm going to say about that now perhaps I will share my roots story okay if I if, if I get the feeling y'all will believe me <laughs> I might have told it already I forgot and told y'all so much stuff but anyway you have anti-Illuminati and NWO themes like you find with Gil Scott Heron Gil Scott Heron is a great artist to listen to who is not using the songwriter secret however he is not it appears to me into religion or uh, even what we would call a believer by our standards it, it, he does not make that clear okay and what we know about nationalists a lot of times is they'll have more communistic leanings where they think that you know religion is just a tool used to control mankind okay and they can think that like a lot of others do and they'll think that until uh, they bump into uh, the devil or a demon Gil Scott's last song me and the devil you should listen to it it's obvious what went on that song was released posthumously Gil Scott died after spending years battling the dark side and obviously appearing to resist the enemy as best he could but like the Panthers you know when you don't have the most high by your side uh, it's hard to continue to make a stand but like a man, he stood. Gil Scott stood until the end. Me and the Devil by Gil Scott Heron. Check it out. Uh, it's not on my list. I'll say that. But I've got The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Interesting, The Revolution is being televised. He said they will not show pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. He repeats that three times. I believe it's the only line that he repeats like that memory serves me correctly you should check out the revolution should not be televised when I hear guys you know putting together different things you know I could be a great soundtrack coordinator because they, they don't be using the right music <laughs> I'm sorry. but uh, also with uh, Doug and Gene Kern who I know they were Muslim but as far as the voice and soundtrack for uh, Black empowerment, their music epitomizes it. Uh, take a song like Revelation or uh, Higher Ground. Higher Ground would be the song I would say would give you a good idea of their sound. And again, it's free from songwriter secret. That's what I'm pointing out. This is not my gospel list. I repeat. Okay, I'm going to go through that list too. But yes, Doug and Gene Kern will always make the consciousness list. They're going to sing things that put something on your mind besides uh, something that you're driving or something fine with a big behind. Exposing the demonic realm and the plots therein. So many tears. Yes, Tupac made that list with so many tears. He makes it clear for those who understand the way uh, of that man he makes it clear that there is indeed a demonic realm and a demonic plot the elevation of physical vibration raising and sparking of higher thought as opposed to the lowering of mental vibration and again this can get a little new age but what did we say about new age a number of videos 
The new age lie could not stand with our old age truths. The best built lies are lies built upon the foundation of a truth. That's the way the enemy builds his lies. So the foundation of the truth is, yes, uh, the elevation of physical vibration, the raising and sparking of higher thought as opposed to the lowering of mental vibration is better for you. Okay? The devil don't create nothing. He didn't got, nor did he create vibration. Uh, Roy Ayers, good vibrations. That would be on both my consciousness and my vibes list. You'll, you'll see what vibes is like in a minute. A reminder of the relevance of past and or forgotten social issues and ills. NWA made my list for that reason. Yes, that's right. I, I, and you know what song? Okay. About the police. One NWA song made that list of consciousness. It was indeed about consciousness. It, uh, about uh, what I just said. It was a reminder of the relevance of past and or forgotten social issues and ills. Okay? People have been talking about the problems in the police department for a long time. From Gil Scott Heron to NWA to today. Now, uh, you know, you have... Uh, civil unrest underway domestic violence sparking young and aspiring artists that or sparking the idea in young and aspiring artists that debase simple formulaic lyrics and music do not guarantee success again Tupac okay just because you do debase simple formulaic, formulaic lyrics that does not mean you will be successful. It means that you will be forgettable. Thought-provoking music naturally stands out. It is built into our human nature by the will of the divine creator. The exposure of otherwise hidden plights of one culture to others. NWA did that. They expressed to uh, uh, other communities what was going on within impoverished inner city communities, the ghettos of America, in NWA and PE giving commentary on negative lifestyles and the negative results and consequences. I have uh, Ghetto Boys, Point of No Return. Again, if uh, the way people talk out in the streets makes your ears burn, it's not for you. Okay, But Ghetto Boys, uh, Point of No Return. You cannot deny that they are anti-Illuminati on that song. All right? Uplifting the downtrodden and the self-image of unjustly demonized individuals. Again, Doug and Gene Kern make that list with uh, higher ground. Also, promoting empowerment, self-owned labels, equalizing false media, Gil Scott, NWA, and the counteraction of fake news, orgs, and commercialism. And again, when I say NWA, I'm not talking about their catalog. Uh, I'm talking about the one song that I have on there is uh, Forget the Police. And then I have a, an Ice Cube song on there called Bird in the Hand. Which is, again, doing exactly what I was saying. And for that matter, No Vaseline also is on there for the same reason. Because he's addressing, he addresses some things okay, in the speech of the streets. But he addresses some things uh, that are, without a doubt, anti-powers that be, anti-NWO. Uh, now for the vibes. Now most of these are songs I've sampled, and many others have too. I'm just going to give you some of those songs uh, on the vibes list. And again, these are songs that are sonically pleasing to the body. High levels of funky beat and soothing melodic vibration. Though today, many listen to the music for agitation of the spirit. Turn up. Not to calm and lower the artificially raised vibrations. We are all forced to generate and receive all day long through everything around us. Wi-Fi, telephone, laptop, TV. All turning up, tuning up your vibration. Tune you up. 
They said that they have machines in the centers of cities that they turn up on Fridays especially to cause people to be in a frenzy vibration. You spend more money, get it in more in a number of ways. Vibes also to balance something that has been elevated or escalated or forced to one side or the other at least equal and opposite force is necessary. So when you've been pushed all the way that way, when you've been turned all the way up, to get you to the middle, you have to turn all the way down. So the vibes list again, it tunes me uh, t to the right frequency, you know, to agreeable frequencies. You know. uh, the lyrics are mostly, I said mostly in capital letters, the lyrics mostly devoid of obvious mind control programming, full of depth, and I say obvious because we know the basis of the songwriter's secret is by default, without giving it up to the creator, you exalt the destroyer. Yet the creator allows for infinite ways to display creation as we are made in the image and likeness. This does not excuse any and all filthy conversation, discreet displays of sinfulness, nor does it limit an artist's true creativity if that creativity is born of the creator. The destroyer is a distorter and does possess a form of artistry that is based upon distortion, not free interpretation of the creation. And lastly, playing skillfully, masterful instrumentation. So on the vibes list, um, you know, I have an enjoyment for skillful playing of instruments. Okay. So again, we're not excusing filthy conversation by having Pac, Public Enemy, NWA, or um, for that matter, if a person had Last Poets on their consciousness list. But again, it was because of uh, what we were looking at, uh, the few <laughs> types of songs, and the randomness of the different styles uh, of songs that can contain what you would have to call positive messages as opposed to the songwriter's secret or at least social political messages in the case of NWA and the Ghetto Boys that's what I was looking at Okay, not so much that it was positive but that uh, it was railing against the enemy as opposed to going along with it could it have been some form of anarchy programming? Well, now looking back, I'm sure that that's what it was used for. Okay? And that was the reason that it was allowed uh, to come out. Okay? So let's look at some of these vibe songs and then gospel. Okay? Everybody loves the sunshine. We've got sun worship. Okay, right off the top. Right off the top. Why I came, that's Roy Ayers. Roy is one of my favorite artists. And he's deeply steeped in New Age. Okay, he makes some great vibration music. But if you listen to the lyrics, you will find a lot of New Age concepts. And we know it was the 70s. You know, I like I like that Roy Ayers, old school Roy Ayers. And, and you know, you want to know what I what I listen to? I'm I'm, I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite lists. Okay. Why I Came to California, Leon Ware. Leon Ware produced the I Want You album. I loved the sound of the I Want You album. I like the uh, dreamscape uh, type of funky 70s arrangement and production of the I Want You album. And I wanted to know who produced this. And I found out it was Leon Ware listening to some of his music. And why I came to California was just a song that uh, I was able to find of his that I really remembered from back when I first looked up who produced Marvin Gaye's I Want You album. We Almost Lost Detroit by Gil Scott Heron and Brian Jackson. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Find something wrong in it, you a bad motor scooter. Stepping into tomorrow, we talked about that. Coffee is the color. Again, Royers made for the 
soundtrack for the movie Coffee starring Pam Greer. No obvious guile in there. But uh, is it a celebration of blackness for a black exploitation movie? <laughs> Certainly it is. Come Live With Me Angel from off the I Want You soundtrack. Marvin Gaye doing the inadvertent songwriter secret in this song. Life is for Learning is on here. A couple of songs uh, later. Life is for Learning. Nothing whatsoever to do with the songwriter secret, but as a matter of fact, exposing the songwriter secret. Life is for Learning by Marvin Gaye. But come live with me, Angel. I told y'all. He was under Project Janice. And he was trying to get up under Janice. For real. The girl named Janice that they set him up with. Who he said was the girl that had been in his dreams. This succubus demon spirit that would appear as a dancing woman in his dreams. And uh, uh, whom he was obsessed with. Especially uh, at this time. When he got a hold of this little girl, she was 16, and he made this song, Come Live With Me Angel, to help influence this little girl to come live with him while he's still yet married to Anna Gordy. So did Marvin, by default, write a song, write a secret song while he is trying to uh, woo this young girl? Of course he did. Come Live With Me Angel. He ended up invited, inviting fallen angels to come and uh, be a part of his life. Let them into his dwelling. Live with him. Have mercy. Mm. Wow. It's from the I Want You album. Still a friend of mine by Incognito. I always imagine it's a <laughs> I always imagine it's about, you know, uh, a friendship. But after looking at Come Live With Me at Angel again, and again, and again, this is why we listen to the songs. This is why you have to play the songs around your brothers and sisters. This is why you have to spend time examining the lyrics, you know, letting others around you try to come up with, okay, what do we think the secret is in there? Because you will come up with some different things when you've got some help. So see what y'all around me now? I'm looking through this list like I never looked through it before, honestly. You know, it, the, the Soul Soul jams was easy. All those was popular songs. Okay, albeit old school songs, old school R&B songs, they were still popular. So still a friend of mine, and they talking about that spirit, still being down with them at a lot of times. All right, of course, uh, look at California, Frankie Beverly and Mays, one of the many California exalting songs, okay? And I, you know, never miss the songwriter's secret when it's coming from Frankie Beverly and Mays, okay? Funky, funky music, but again, you want to look at where is there any evidence of new aginess when we're talking about Frankie Beverly and Mays, we know that that, that was there contribution to the songwriter secret okay to bring the new age uh, to uh, black folk okay uh, war no more trouble now something I heard him say uh, uh, dream of lasting peace world citizenship now would world citizenship really be what we would want? The abolishment of uh, nationalities? That sounds like a one world government plan. And Bob Marley, I, I believe in my heart of hearts, uh, was probably told this idea and that it was a good idea and was told all the good things about it, the oneness of humanity. But we understand that the oneness has to do with taking away your freedoms. Making everyone one would require everybody to conform to something. Let's continue. Uh, 
Headless Heroes by Eugene McDaniels. Highly recommend it. It's free and clear. Free and clear. Elevate Our Minds by Linda Williams. Free and clear. Up to the point of. I feel it walking on the fence of new age in as much as it could be a way of uh, promoting the Luciferian lie, which is big in new age, that by your mind, you will get salvation. But you listen to it, tell me what you think. The sound of it, good vibration. Bob Marley, Zion Lion, and of course we know what the Rastas uh, believe, and uh, that it's total foolishness. Holly Selassie is dead as a dunk now. They said he was God in the flesh. Okay. Incarnate. Jesus incarnate. Jesus, children of America. Stevie Wonder. Well, uh, sound, sounds good, but you know, we're looking at New Age presenting a new style Jesus. And the one line that I couldn't shake from my mind was transcendental meditation you know transcend what again meditation being a practice of practitioners of magic from India also being a form of emptying oneself so that you will become a vessel for the demon spirits who are waiting for an open vessel to hop in and take a ride. And that's the same purpose for astral projection. To make you get out this space. Move. Get out the driver's seat. So one of them can hop in. Nautilus, Bob James. I believe that we're looking at a, a grand example of manipulating sound to open up portals and gateways underground which is why it's called Nautilus okay uh, the revolution will not be televised morning glory and music of the mind by Jamiroquai morning glory it must be about the sun maybe I need it maybe I need it not Post this one here at all. And just have mercy. I never looked at my vibes list uh, in quite this manner. Interesting. Georgia Ann Muldrow, Calabash. Tell me what's wrong with Calabash. And you bad. Calabash, C A L A B A S H. Georgia Ann Muldrow and Mad Lib. Also, same artist. Georgia Ann Muldrow and Mad Lib, Akusa, A-K-O-U-S-A. She has some very positive songs. She's young. Uh, I believe just 30 or 31. She also has a song called Kali Yuga. Now, again, uh, she appears to be a part of the black New Age dynamic. And, you know, that's unfortunate but she doesn't push it in all of her songs a lot of her songs are just uh, about the socio-political condition such as seeds okay and so I would advise you you know if you're looking for some music and you're not ready for gospel get ready for it because that's next uh, but these are just some suggestions of how there are artists who don't use the songwriter's secret as we've learned it but as you see it's the new age area that can get a, a little dicey there okay where you have this I don't know like they're walking a line you know uh, in the promotion of elevating the mind okay which is you know not in and of itself a bad thing but it's when that is your replacement for elevating your relationship with the Creator and realizing that by the Holy Spirit you'll know all things. It's the only thing can't be fooled. 
Okay, so let's move forward here. Oh, virtual insanity is a one. Virtual insanity by Jamiroquai. No songwriter secret, no guile. Social, political, anti Illuminati. And My People Hold On by Eddie Kendricks. Song I listen to every day. You can't find nothing wrong with it, no type of way. My People Hold On, Eddie Kendricks. I know I was going to find some eventually. Have mercy. Help me, help me. Lord help me. T Plays It Cool by Marvin Gaye. It came from the Trouble Man soundtrack. It's instrumental and it's good vibrations. Okay, I feel no guile in it whatsoever. All right. Um, Vision Stevie Wonder had a little new aginess to it, but again, it's not that everything new age says is a, a flat out lie. It's the way that the picture is painted as the supremacy of mankind coming together as one or the supremacy of the mind being a little slick side way of letting in the new world religion. The one world religion, which will be New Age, which is nothing, which will be nothing but a form of magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. The usage of the mind to be as God. Okay, to set one free. And we're gonna jump to. Uh, oh, and uh, Funk and Telekey. Sorry, Funk and Telekey. In inner city, oh yeah, Funk and Teleki by P Funk, Parliament Funkadelic. Funk and Teleki, when you've taken every kind of pill, nothing seems to ever cure your ill. Uh, again, he says, mind your wants because someone wants your mind. It's to sound like he's on a lunatic rant. And to put your mind on the 12 monkeys in that respect. But the lunatic's not ranting. The lunatic's telling you about the future. Check it out. And Inner City Blues by Marvin Gaye. Now, now for the good part. Gospel. You have a problem with gospel music. I know, I know some of you do. Well, why gospel music? Number one, praise and worship essential to edify believers and amplify the blessings and spiritual focus that uh, we receive by an infilling of the Holy Spirit. Praise and worship is absolutely essential. All right. You look at Solomon, you look at the Messiah. You find uh, in both of them examples of praise and worship. Again, as the Messiah, Jesus was God in the flesh, holy man and holy God. So, as the man, he was uh, exemplifying how a man should conduct himself, especially a priest of the Most High. Okay, he said, Be in the world and not of the world, a physician comes to heal the sick so um, but he exemplified as did Solomon we saw in the testament of Solomon that praise and worship is of utmost importance going hard for God fearlessly expressing praise and honor for the most high if you be ashamed of the Messiah he will be ashamed of you before the father testifying identifying with the struggles of other believers encouraging Acknowledging the Messiah. All real gospel will acknowledge Jesus. Reminding of uh, us, excuse me, reminding of our place as heirs, joint heirs, like heirs to a throne, and our ability to conquer adversary and adversity. Reminding us of scripture. 
Okay, a lot of the good old gospel would be based off of his scripture, I, I, and, and some of the current too. I, I, a song sticks in my head: "Beautiful are the feet that that carry the gospel." It's a beautiful song, and it's based off the, the uh, scripture. So, gospel can oftentimes remind us of scripture, and we need that. Please believe that. Next, hearing voices and music played by those with definite anointing, such as the Clark Sisters, and actual ministers of music, is beneficial, uplifting to the soul, and edifying to the body as a whole. Increasing your infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is essential, that is uh, accomplished by listening to anointed gospel. It's all kinds of gospel out here. How do you know what's anointed and what's not? You test the spirit by the spirit. Motivation to continue to fight the good fight. Some uh, gospel gives you encouragement to continue putting the stomp on that chomp and going hard. Okay? So, uh, gospel music can motivate you in battle. In spiritual warfare it, it's great to wage it while you have uh, YouTube on audio Bible pardon me reading from the Psalms King David was a warrior and many of those songs are penned by uh, he or by his chief musicians for celebration of warfare for entering warfare for celebration of the victory of warfare or for uh, petitioning uh, for the Lord to go with him in warfare and in, and in battle so that's a, a very important tool to have and to play gospel music in the home it's better than smudging burning frankincense or doing any of that other nonsense uh, not that it does not have its merit to do those things but don't, don't come and bomb me know about frankincense and smudging and all that type of stuff but I'm going to tell you what if you can't afford it you know the creator makes himself accessible to the poor and to the, the uh, dumb deaf and blind okay and that clears the air it's clearing the air it's better than smudging on demons that ain't budging Bills above. Huh. Lord of the Flies likes to be around the unclean thing. Think about that. So, uh, Lysol for Bills above is to play gospel music. Gets the unclean things away from you. And cleansing the subconscious mind when trouble and when trying to sleep. Gospel music is a great asset, something to play. Uh, there's nothing better for your vibration, and uh, it will help to keep the spirits uh, at bay and away while you're trying to get your get your rest on. But uh, these are some of my uh, gospel tunes. You brought the sunshine by the Clark Sisters. They used that for a Sunny Delight commercial, and people had issue with it. However, it's clear what their intention was, what the record label will sometimes do, is they will, because they have a meaning for sun and sunshine that's different than what Twinkie and them had, what the label will do is they, you know, they devil and take it you know say well you know we're going to twist it into sun worship put on the radio and so that may have happened with that song but it's an anointed song and you know it when you hear it also blessed and highly favored by the Clark sisters I listen to that uh, faithfully every day it uplifts me when I listen to that song uh, it, it really lifts me up Balm and Gilead Y'all know Karen Clark can throw down. She throw down in Balm and Gilead and you feel that anointing. You feel that conviction. 
Jesus Forevermore by the Clark Sisters. Oh, no, you know, I got a lot of Clark Sisters. Here's one. God is Love. I said it before by Marvin Gaye. You, you'll find a lot of different versions of it. There's a version uh, on YouTube that's a minute and 41 seconds. I really enjoy listening to that. Sometimes I put it on repeat. And despite the error of uh, Stevie in aligning Transcendental Meditation, which is a way to invite demon spirits in you with Jesus, Jesus Children of America, because there's some lines in there that he says that shows me that like all humans can be, if you really be for real and admit to yourself, uh, you know, he didn't have all the answers, you know, and neither do I. But uh, we know what the songwriter's secret is about. We understand how to hear it out. We understand how to work it out. Okay, but um, sometimes the hardest thing is figuring out how to get it out. Excuse me. How do you get these songs out of your head and out of your life? You know. So. We have to be careful not to be among the simple ones. I just saw myself, how I allowed for myself to be among the simple ones as I looked through uh, my own list of vibes music. And um, it's got to go. Simple as that. So, got to get to cleaning that out. So, uh, you know, simple and dumb is different. I feel for somebody dumb. Dumb means you don't know. Maybe nobody ever told you. But they can learn. You can teach them. Simple is you just don't want to know. You're complacent and happy in the place that you are of ignorance. Your ignorance is bliss. You can be college educated, affluent in society, living in luxury or poverty, and be simple. Dumb is a disability. Simple is a choice. All you simple ones, how we love simplicity. Well, let's stay sharp. Let's continue to uh, uplift one another, pray for one another. And sharpen one another. Iron sharpens iron and steel sharpens steel. And uh, learn from one another still. So I thank you again for spending this time with me. Um, also a big shout out to Golden Lady who did uh, some great breakdowns. Maybe we'll look at a couple of those. Excellent, excellent uh, breakdowns of the songwriter's secret few songs we had not looked at just yet and then a couple that we had and also a uh, big shout out to uh, the sister for pointing out about the tree of knowledge that's why we're going to look at the book of Baruch first how uh, the tree of knowledge people want to wonder well why would that tree be put there well according to third Baruch chapter 4 verses 4 through 7 in the Greek version is chapter 4 verse 8 and again big shout out to you sister double S uh, according to that book the enemy planted that tree Mercy. so that may be something interesting for us to see so we'll look into that for the next reading if that's agreeable with y'all but uh, just before we go I want to bring to mind a couple of these uh, great discoveries that were excellent <laughs> um, from the golden lady strawberry letter 23 let's Let's look at the lyrics. Hello, my love. I heard a kiss from you. Again, you know, this uh, could be a reference of 
the gift of a song, as uh, uh, our sister pointed out. And again, the love reference is to who they love and revere. They're pining for attention from Lucifer. Okay, we know about the uh, significance in the occult of 23. We talked about that all throughout the Michael Jordan video. We don't have to go back through that. All right, but why a strawberry letter or a red letter? Okay, as in the scarlet letter 23. Let's continue. Red magic satin playing near too. Here it also appears he eventually heard the melody. So he was inspired with the music as well. Some of the most cryptic lyrics in all of R&B. When it comes on, everybody just falling out. All through the morning rain, I gaze, the sun doesn't shine. Rainbows, rainbows and waterfalls run through my mind. Sound too good, but again, we have the fantasy imagery, we have the sun god reference, and we have the uh, reference to the rain, the rain man. In the garden, I see west, purple shower, bells and tea, orange birds and river, cousins dressed in green. Pretty music I hear, so happy and loud, blue flower echo from a cherry cloud. The blue and the red. We have the uh, imagery that sounds to be uh, under a hallucination. Okay, God is not the author of confusion. So when we see this type of confusion, we think it's poetic and pretty, and it's confusion. And confusion by any other name is still the same. And this is uh, obviously the, co the confusion that comes from being blowed. Okay, a drug-induced, uh, drug-inspired bit of prose is what we just went through. Uh, feel sunshine, sparkle pink and blue. Again, sun god reference. Playgrounds will laugh. Will laugh. Playgrounds will laugh if you try to ask, "Is it cool? Is it cool?" I remember my old dudes to say, "Get, get cool. I'm finna get cool." Okay, so could that be confirmation to the fact that we're talking about uh, possession that's drug induced? If you arrive and don't see me, I'm going to be with my baby. I am free, flying in her arms over the sea. He's with a succubus, astral projection. And again, these are. The commentary notes of our sister Golden Lady. Stained window, yellow candy screen. See speakers of kite with velvet roses digging freedom flight. You know, that I'm, you know, add my little two cent. It might only be one and a half cent because she got this going on. It was Holy Ghost Heaven sent. So a present from you, Strawberry Letter 22. Hmm. The music plays. I sit in for a few. A present from you, Strawberry Letter 22. The music plays. I sit in for a few. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the that is the uh, inspiration coming in, and they're sitting sitting down, receiving it. Uh huh. And 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 okay. A little more commentary. It's interesting. The song is called Strawberry Letter 23, but the reference is constantly to 22. Interesting. The 22, we know, is uh, double doubles or twin twin, the duality, the uh, Project Janus marking of duality. And uh, Sister also re recounts that. Uh, she was told that the brothers had fell out and did not speak for many, many years. Uh, and it was said that no one knew the reason. But uh, it's interesting because when you see this uh, family dynamic, 
you'll find the familial spirit is involved. You have the Pointer Sisters, you have uh, the, uh, the uh, Jackson family, you have the Osmond family. You have uh, oftentimes this uh, family dynamic in show business, even with uh, Billy Ray Cyrus and, Myrie, and Miley Cyrus. This family dynamic is indicative of the demon's assignment on a bloodline. Tila Tequila had related information that many of the artists that we don't think are related are actually related. Not even just the artists, but entertainers, politicians, the whole nine yards. So uh, when I saw Brothers Johnson, and you know, after I was aware of the songwriter secret, uh, Strawberry, Strawberry Letter 23, I didn't tackle. really hands on because I saw the number 23 I realized the numerological significance then I thought about the name of the group I thought about the significance of homosexual sex uh, in Crowley sex magic practices and I thought about the goofy imagery of the song lyrics and I was just sold, okay, here's another one, another one bites the dust, you know, they, so you turn that backwards, uh, I believe, <laughs> that's the song, that's the song by Queen, that they say, if you turn another one bites the dust backwards, it says, smoke, uh, I, it's fun to smoke marijuana, something like that, but I digress, so, um, Brothers Johnson, Strawberry Letter 23 was never one that I wanted to really look at, and I'm going to tell you honestly, I never liked that song. People would sample it. People would jam to that song. Old school station, play it. Uh, people love to hear it. I never liked Strawberry Letter 23. I never did. I thought it was stupid when I was a kid. And I still think it's stupid to this day. Uh, even aside from looking at the things that esoterically it has to say <clears throat> but uh, I'm very thankful to have received that uh, breakdown and a couple of others that I'll, I'll save for another uh, songwriter secret where we really sit down and just really look at um, really sit down and look at the secrets some more okay uh, and of course the uh, nicknames of the two brothers George was Lightning Licks and Lewis Johnson was Thunder Thumbs and Mercy so uh, we'll come back and look at the songwriter secret some more and then I'm going to do one real quick one just on this strange connection uh, that I saw in some names so again, we thank you uh, for joining. Again, uh, this is a temple of the true Yahshua. Uh, I'm your brother, Brother Minister Theo, a.k.a. Unplug'em, and I appreciate your time. Shalom.